Welcome, Your Excellency. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good afternoon, members of the press, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm pleased to deliver these initial remarks on behalf of the members of the African Union Committee of Ten Heads of State and Government on the reform of the United Nations Security Council, namely Algeria, Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Kenya, Libya, Namibia, Senegal, Uganda, Zambia, and my country, Sierra Leone. We are joined by A3 Plus members, Guyana and Mozambique. After nearly 80 years since the establishment of the United Nations and its Security Council, its imbalanced structure of bygone errors persists, undermining the legitimacy and effectiveness. It is therefore fundamentally important to address the issue of non-representation and under-representation of Africa in both the permanent and non-permanent categories of the Security Council, respectively. The current lack of representation in the permanent category does not reflect the current global landscape. And it is fundamental to consider the structural changes for its rectification. Additionally, it is significant to evaluate the, Secu the Security Council's performance and legitimacy to ensure its effectiveness in addressing global challenges. It is deeply saddening to see the continued impact of historical injustice on Africa, and we must acknowledge and address these issues. Africa demands equitable representation in all UN decision-making organs particularly the Security Council. By ensuring Africa's voice is heard, we can legitimize the UN's work and true, truly implement decisions that benefit the continent. Continuing this unfairness, we marginalize an entire continent that is highly important on the Security Council's agenda. Africa boasts a population of over 1.3 billion people, and its 54 countries represent about 28% of the total UN membership. Africa plays a significant role in peacekeeping and conflict resolution, yet it is vastly underrepresented. Therefore, our demand for two permanent seats with all the rights and prerogatives of current members and two additional non-permanent member seats is a matter of common justice that needs to be addressed. I'm therefore pleased that as coordinator of the CTEN, my country has sparked the first ever debate in the Security Council occurring at a critical time on addressing the historical injustice and enhancing Africa's effective representation in the United Nations Security Council. This debate was essential to spotlight further the urgency of rectifying the historical injustice that has significantly hampered Africa's capability to contribute effectively to the global governance stage on the global governance stage and further engage in productive discussions in enhancing the Council's effectiveness and legitimacy. The CTEN has demonstrated a strong commitment to addressing the historical injustice 
and inequality of the Security Council on Africa. The CETEN will continue to amplify Africa's voice on this matter in advancing the common African position as outlined in the Ezowini Consensus and SAT Declaration. We are pleased to note that the common African position has received wide support within the reform process. I therefore register our profound thanks and appreciation to the member states, interest groups and regional groups for their continued and unwavering support for Africa and the common African position in the intergovernmental negotiations at the UN General Assembly. There is general convergence that redressing historical injustice against Africa is viewed as a priority. Several delegations have also mentioned that Africa should be treated as a special case. We are also pleased that the IGN's input to the Pact for the Future to be adopted during the Summit of the Future in September conveys the same imperative message, addressing historical injustice as a priority and treat Africa as a special case. What is now clear to us is the need to take the significant next step. The engagement and discussions have gone on for far too long. We have no doubt that the Council needs reforming and the common African position has received wide support. It is time to take the next step and put the motion, the motion, the actual reform of rectifying the historical injustice against Africa. I'm not ready to take a few questions, if there are any. President Bio, hello, I'm Margaret Bashir with Voice of America. Um, I just wanted to ask you, uh, where is, in your national capacity, where is former President Karoma and will he be returning to Sierra Leone to face uh, prosecution for his alleged role in the attempted coup? President Karoma is currently in Nigeria and our necessary step to make sure that uh, um, 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 and justice is served as far as everybody that was concerned in the alleged coup plot, a coup plot um, we, we, be, we be enforced. <laughs> yes, Mr. President, Xu Dezhi with China Central Television. You have a very bold suggestion for the reform of Security Council, including two permanent seats and two uh, non-permanent seats, and also ask uh, P5 to abandon their veto rights. How much confidence do you have that this proposal will be processed in the UN? Thank you. Um, could you please, uh, this is Arun Lewis from Indonesia News Service. Could you please uh, tell us how do you expect to overcome the opposition of groups like the Uniting for Consensus, which have been blocking the reform process? The African continent has a very compelling case, and that is what we are pushing for. We are not uh, talking about the first question. We are not calling for the total abolish, abolition of the um, veto power. We are saying that if member states want to retain it, it should be extended to all permanent members. And uh, we want to be, Africa deserves a place to be a permanent member of the Security Council. And um, confidence, we are sure. It's a matter of time. Of course, the gatekeepers will find it difficult to let us in. But as you can see, there is already willingness and we are gradually inching towards um, um, the steps, the next steps that we are talking about in order to be able to to reach um, our goal of being a member uh, of the Security Council. So we are very sure uh, that uh, with the, the, the support of member states, the C10, 
and the whole of Africa, we have a genuine and compelling case, and we have a model that we have presented, and we are sure about getting in. Well, I, I, we, we don't consider opposition. Uh, we have a genuine case, and that is what we are pushing. We know that others, uh, there are quite a lot of, it's, it's a total reform, but we are talking for Africa, and uh, we will welcome what is happening elsewhere. But um, there should be no opposition, uh, frankly speaking. We have a genuine and compelling case, and that is what we are pushing. Thank you. Thank you.